because I thought somebody said I couldn't do 4C hair. What's up, YouTube family? I'm back with another Silk Press video. Yes, another one, okay? <laughs> if you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and turn on your post notifications so you're the first to be alerted when I post a new video, all right? So yes, in the comments, some shawty said something to say about my type four hair, or it wasn't type four, it's not 4C. We wanna see you blow out 4C hair, can you really do it? Well, you know what? I'm gonna oblige y'all just this one time. Just this one time, I'm gonna let y'all have it, okay? This video is type four hair, and if you wanna call it 4C, you can. Y'all know I don't do the curl type thing. Um, I believe it limits us. It's coily, it's coily, it's texture, period. But I'm gonna oblige you just this one time, so stay tuned, love y'all. All right, let's get into it. So my guest here is a return client. Um, she just came out of a protective style. And usually, um, even if guests say they detangle at home, I always go back through and dry detangle before I go to the bowl. Why? Because we want to get all that shed hair out, remove any knots and tangles. If you go in and start shampooing on already tangled hair, you know what you're gonna get? mats and dreadlocks that's uncomfortable for your client <laughs> and it's another workload for you okay so take the time use um, a water bottle and a spray uh, like leave-in conditioner or detangler and gently work through from the ends back up to the roots and you can see it's going pretty easily here i'm not harming my client at all she's completely comfortable um i did speed this video up just a hair so it may look like i'm using more force than what's necessary but i'm moving very slow very gently pulling all those tangles out of the hair it also gives you a chance to remove any debris, any lint. Sometimes if they use any type of uh, gel or edge control, it can cake up at the roots. Very important that you brush that out beforehand and get this hair fully detangled. Okay, as far as hair type is concerned, I would consider this guest a type four. Again, guys, you know my feelings about the curl typing system. I'm not against it, but I'm not for it either. Here's why. It gives us a great grid to work from so we can understand texture, understand curl patterns, and um, it does give us some knowledge of what products may work best for certain curl types. However, again, you know, I've said it in my previous videos, there are over 7 billion people in this world. It is impossible to put them into four categories. I have seen some textures that completely fall off the charts. They don't make, there's nothing about them similar to any of those textures, okay? So anyway, I would consider her type four. Her hair is medium to low porosity, okay? So that's gonna affect what products I use. Um, to start with, um, what I'm detangling with is my Mazzani 25 Miracle Milk. Um, it's a great detangler, a great leave-in conditioner. It's gonna soften the hair, makes it super easy for me to comb through. And guys, you wanna make sure you go through the entire head when you're doing this. Take your time, be gentle, but thoroughly detangle it. After I finish detangling, I'm gonna take her over to the shampoo bowl where I'm gonna do a scalp detox using my Mazzani pre-treatment, uh, the exfoliating treatment, and then I'm gonna shampoo her as normal. And we're back to the chair. You can see her texture and all this glory. Side note, I've silk pressed her four times in the last six months. She has zero loss of curl, zero curl elongation. She has all of her curls intact. Now across her head, across her head, and again, this is why I say, be careful with that curl chart. She has about three different textures, okay? In the back, um, you may consider a 4B. Towards the center is definitely 4C. Towards the top, uh, off the chart, <laughs> okay? <laughs> she has extremely, extremely high density, and the texture of her hair is medium to coarse, okay? Pay attention to all that kind of stuff, guys. That's what matters, not the curl. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna style the curl. We're gonna um, enhance the curl, whether it be a natural style or through a silk blowout. But guys, listen, the curl should not be the biggest concern. You have to pay attention to porosity, pay attention to the elasticity of the hair, pay attention to how well it accepts water, how quickly it dries out. All of that matters, okay? Because that's gonna help determine whether the curl pattern leaves or stays. Very important. It's also going to determine, determine your end result. It's going to determine how much heat you're going to use, what products you're going to use. If I'm working with low porosity hair, nine times out of 10, when I'm, I'm going in for my blow dries, I'm going to use my 25 Miracle Milk and I'm going to use my 25 Miracle Cream. You know why? I want that extra layer of moisture and protection, okay? Her hair needs slip and it's slow to absorb products. I want products that go into the hair strand easily and do their job. I don't need products that are going to sit on top, that are going to create a cast on the hair or just do nothing. I want them to go inside. It's more than just getting product on top of the hair to protect it. You need nurture, nurturing and uh, you need nutrients, excuse me, you need nutrients on the inside of the hair shaft, okay? Hey, Shalia, that's my other client. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love that they come up and greet me. But yeah, you need that those nutrients on the inside of the hair shaft. All right, and they help assist with the blow dryer. You can see I'm going through with my paddle brush. You know how I do. It's gonna be a paddle and a brush for me. I need tension. I need to stretch that hair out. Tension and heat must meet. All right. Um, also, guys, pay attention to my method. I'm stretching that hair out first before I go in and start, you know, really manipulating with the dry. I want to get it as stretched as possible. Then I'm going to go in, apply some force and some tension and get that hair straight. It is normal to see mist, steam, some type of, uh, you can call it a vapor or smoke even, to come from the blow drying process. You are causing water to leave the hair shaft. When heat meets water, what happens? It evaporates, it steams, it boils all that good stuff it's leaving the hair shaft and it's so important that you get this stuff right you do not want to flat iron hair that is still wet okay hear me again you do not want to flat iron hair that is still wet what you're going to do is boil water inside the hair that's going to create breakage it's actually a condition where you create bubbling inside the hair strand that's going to cause breakage okay take your time get this step right i don't care what anybody says this is the most important step of a silk press service it's going to determine how well the hair is going to last it's also going to determine how much heat you're going to use at the flat iron if i don't blow dry it well i'm going to work harder with the flat iron that's going to be uh, create a greater chance for heat damage you don't want heat damage curly elongation it's just not good okay you want to make sure the hair is protected and you're going to do this by executing every step well. Next to the shampoo, this is the most important part, okay? That shampoo and conditioner is going to lay the foundation. You know what I say, the foundation happens at the bowl. Next, I'm going to follow that through with my blow dry step. Be very thorough. Don't miss a beat, especially when it comes to highly dense textured hair. Her hair is extremely dense. She has about four times the amount of hair that's on a normal head of hair, okay? I have to take my time and I have to section. I need to go in small sections. I need to get the root straight. I need to take my time and work that hair out with my blow dryer so that by the time I get to my flat iron, I'm just smoothing the hair strand. You can see her hair is straight from the blow dryer alone. From the blow dryer alone, this is the way it's supposed to be. All right, you guys ask me all the time what tools I'm using, what blow dryer, what paddle brush. Before I give you these, uh, the names of these tools, I wanna stress that it's not the tool, guys, okay? It's not the tool. I'm a hair tool junkie. I literally, back home in Jersey, I have a cabinet full of tools, some of which I haven't touched. I'll go home and see them and say, oh, I'm gonna use that today. I switch tools like water, okay? Because it's not the tool. And some days I may wanna use a different flat iron. I wanna feel something different in my hand or I buy a new blow dryer, it just all depends. This blow dryer in particular is what I consider one of my workhorses. It stays in my kit. This is a Rust Super Freak. Um, it's a 2000 watt blow dryer with an Italian motor. Uh, why that's good is because they're gonna last a long time. They can handle the rigors of salon work without breaking down or blowing out. And I like that, all right? it's. Um, pretty mid-level of the market when it comes to pricing but the dryer works okay i have other dryers that do the same thing i'm not you know hell bent on one particular brand this one just does the job very well okay i actually just purchased a new dryer which i'm excited about using i'm gonna do a review on one of my upcoming videos the gamma iq um, perfecto dryer i'm super excited about it but for now i'm working with my rust and it's getting the job done the paddle brush i'm using is by from it's a hot paddle um, the base plate of this uh, paddle brush actually heats up to assist with the blow dry process and it starts to smooth the cuticle of the hair out. You can see that shine that's coming on the hair. That is no doubt from the products and it's also from this blow dryer and this powder brush, all right? You need good working tools, okay? They make a difference. They won't tear the hair shaft up. Um, this brush actually does an excellent job of detangling as well. I don't particularly use it for a detangling brush because I have a detangling brush, but if I need it to, it does the job just as well. The bristles are nice and aligned. They're not too tight, and they also don't have those little ballies on the ends. I cannot stand brushes with the ballies on the end. For coily, tight hair, what it does is wrap itself around that and it causes breakage, so I'm not a huge fan. I like brushes that are simple, that get the job done. All right, you can see I'm finishing up her blow dryer. Her hair is shiny already. If you don't see shine during the blow dryer, you're not gonna see an extreme amount of shine during the flat iron process. And you don't wanna coat the hair with so much product trying to create shine. And um, you can get that from just polishing the cuticle that comes from good products, a proper um, conditioning service, and just a smooth blow dryer, all right? This is where it starts, guys. Every part of the service matters. You can't jack up the shampoo and conditioner and rush through the blow dry and rush through the flat iron and think you're gonna get it done with just flat iron and curling. That's not going to do it. That shine starts at the bowl, okay? Take your time, work it out, work it out, all right? 
So I'm going on to press her hair. You know, I start on a diagonal. If you're working with a client who has a flexible scalp, play very close attention um, to how close you get to it and make sure you're not actually clamping the scalp when you press the hair, okay? That's painful. And you know what I say, burns are not normal. Um, I have switched up flat irons on you guys. <laughs> I told you how I feel about tools. I will switch in a minute. This flat iron has been in my kit probably for six, seven years. And I just happened to go home to Jersey and <laughs> I went through my cabinet and it fell out. I said, like, oh, hey, you're still here. So I started using it again and it works just as good as new, all right? This is a Babyliss, uh, I think it's a porcelain and tourmaline ceramic iron, one of those fancy names, um, but I love it. Um, typically, I only use ceramic irons when I'm doing silk presses only because ceramic is a little gentler on the hair. Um, I'm not against titanium irons, and maybe I should do a video um, pretty soon about the difference between titanium and ceramic, um, whether it matters, what's the difference, all that good stuff. There is a difference, um, but for my preference and for what I actually prefer my guests to use at home, if they're going to be doing straightening services on themselves, it's a ceramic iron. There's less room for error, the heat is gentler, and um, I just like the way it treats natural hair, okay? So this iron is ceramic. I do have another iron that's actually copper coated as our copper plate and I actually like it too, but I just like ceramic. It doesn't do the same thing for me. Just me. I'm not saying it doesn't work. If it works for you, work it. All right. Y'all look at the shine. <laughs> Gets me every time. That's crazy. Yeah. It's interesting watching you work back on a video. This is phenomenal, but she has extremely dense hair and I love pressing out dense hair, um, especially highly textured hair because it just yields such a good result. It is such a beautiful transformation to know our hair can go from tightly coiled and curly and all that good stuff to silky straight and then back again. That's the beautiful part about texture hair. I love, love, love texture. Okay. Cause you can do so much with it. Take a note of uh, the size of my partings. Um, they're not too thick, not too thin. I'm limited to one pass. Sometimes I'll go in and bump that root twice and then come down. It depends on the size of the section of hair I choose. All right. Her hair is blown out pretty consistently, so I'm not working really hard with the flat iron. I'm letting it do its job. Okay. Again, if you see steam coming from the iron gods, it is product. Okay. Do not be alarmed. If I don't see steam, I'm usually a little nervous. That means there's not a barrier on the hair shaft for the, to buffer that iron against the hair, okay? That usually means there's gonna be some heat damage, okay? Another thing you wanna pay close attention to when you're shampooing, be very thorough. You wanna remove all those uh, synthetic oils, product buildup, all that stuff off. Cause if you go to blow dry and flat iron, you're essentially recooking that product into the hair. First of all, it stinks, okay? And I know some ladies have some experience going to get their hair done or doing it themselves and they haven't gotten all that product out and you smell that weird, you know, smell. <laughs> okay, it's burnt. It's not, it smells like burnt cookies. It's not good, all right? Make sure you get the hair thoroughly clean, especially in the back of the head. That's where that product likes to hide and usually when you're shampooing, all this stuff is running down from the front, kind of gets caught in the back of texture hair. Open that hair up. Open that section up and rinse it thoroughly, all right? Water is your friend in that process. And if you need more uh, detail on that, check out one of my previous videos on the detailed shampoo process. I walk you through what I do during the, uh, or what takes place at the bowl, okay? Take your time. Every step of this service should be tedious. It should be well thought out. Um, apply all your brain power to it. Don't just, you know, power through it and again, treat every client differently i've started doing it so unconsciously now i don't even remember but um in the salon when i'm working with guests i actually turn all my tools off between clients and number one because i don't want my tools to burn out they shouldn't be left on all day especially tools that don't have automatic shutoffs but also because it gives you a chance to reset for each guest so i don't have to worry about remembering to turn my iron down my iron is not on Okay, so by the time I get back to the chair, I have to turn my stuff back on and that immediately sends um, me an alert to, you know, adjust my temperature for this guest. Everybody's hair is different. And again, with curl typing, if I'm doing 4C hair, 4C with high porosity, it's totally different than 4C with low porosity. The texture is different. The amount of heat it takes is different. How it straightens is totally different. You have to take that in consideration. So that's why you can have 4C girls that buy the same product and the product doesn't work on, you know, their hair. Every, probably every natural watching this video can attest to the fact that you have a beauty supply store's worth of product <laughs> in your bathroom cabinet. Why? Because they said it was for type four hair. You bought it, it didn't work. Why not? 
Why didn't it work? How come she got beautiful? How come I watched this girl on YouTube? She used it. She got great results. And then I used it and my hair didn't respond. Your porosity level is probably different. Your texture is probably different. You may have a tighter cuticle layer. You may have less cuticles. All right. All that matters. This is why you can't treat everybody the same. And this is why I stress it's important to, when you start your natural journey to go to a reputable hairstylist who works with natural hair. Um, Sidebar, I don't mean this as a slight to any influencer or any natural hair guru on YouTube. I think it's wonderful information out there. Y'all have changed the game when it comes to how we approach textured hair and you have helped probably billions of black women learn how to style their natural hair, learn how to work with their natural hair. The challenge with that though is you're only working with yours. I'll say that again, you're only working with yours and when you're watching this, when you're watching this influencer, they live with their hair, they work with their hair, they know their hair like the back of their hand, but the hair on their head is not the hair on your head. So that pro that's probably why the product doesn't work the same. This is why you need a professional to come in and assess your hair, determine the porosity, your curl type, your curl pattern, um, the texture of your hair. Is it rough? Is it smooth? Do you have a raised cuticle? Is your hair high porosity? Does it respond to product well? How well does it hold moisture? Um, does you, do you have any underlying conditions? Does your hair split easily? Do you have, um, uh, you know, bubbles in the hair shell? All this kind of stuff matters. And when you see a stylist, a trained stylist, a professional stylist, they can help you develop your regimen, show you what's possible, show you what you need, recommend products. All of this matters, guys, okay? And I, I, I pray, I hope, I really do wish that stylists would become more involved with education and educating their clients. It's so important. We can't just do hair take their money and let them leave the chair and not say anything. We have to educate, okay? Because it's, it's gonna determine whether they come back with a head full of healthy hair because nine times out of 10, when the breakdown happens, they're not gonna blame themselves. They're gonna blame you and it is your fault because you did not educate. I said that. It is your fault because you did not educate, okay? We have to bring education back to the forefront. I have talked my head off back to this video. I've gone through the press service. I'm now just adding some waves. I always follow up with some finishing spray. This one is anti-humidity. It's called humidity, he, blah, 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 tongue twister, humidity resistant mist. And it's by Mazzani. It works great. It has a light hole. Y'all, I'm done. I've talked a lot. Send me your questions. Send me your comments. I just thought I'd do this for y'all who said I can't do 4C hair. Boom. Oh, and like and subscribe. Go ahead, you know you want to. Don't be shy. Go ahead, I still love you. Hit that hit that like and subscribe button, turn on your post notifications so you see when I make a post, all right? And make sure you follow me on social media, all right? I love you guys. Till the next video, peace out.